All right, welcome back, guys. I um, guess we're going to be out for a little bit longer for this um, pandemic. So, <coughs> excuse me. If you have questions regarding these, um, these videos, um, I will be having some online tutorials or, like, video conferencings. Um, I look in your emails, check your Google accounts. I will be posting some times on Remind. Please make sure you keep up with your schoolwork. Um, we're going to keep trucking along, I guess. Okay, guys? We'll get through this, so just bear with me, and we'll play it by ear. Okay, guys? All right, so ideal gas laws. Ideal gas laws. Um, after this video, hopefully you will be able to explain what ideal gas is. Uh, calculate an unknown pressure, temperature, volume, and amount of gas using ideal gas law equation. All right. This is the one that I called the Pivnert. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I actually called it in class because you guys know what it was. It's on your foldable. Hopefully you have your foldable. If not, I will post um, the foldable in Schoology where you can print it off. I will have... Um, I'll put a digital copy of it somewhere, okay, guys? I it, All this is kind of new with as far as being totally digital and not being able to see you guys in class. I miss you guys, but we'll, we'll get through it. Ideal gases are gases that are said to follow all assumptions of kinetic molecular theory. That means they, they follow all the rules exactly. All right. An ideal gas is also considered to conform to all gas laws. Okay. So up until now, we've only changed variables such as pressure, volume, temperature, and gas, and even some moles because we did Avogadro's. But in this case, we're going to, um, in these cases, we're going to change the, the amount of gas also. Okay. The combined gas law can be modified to include the amount of gas by including a variable N, which we've already talked about. That's the one that was Avogadro's number. So now, um, ideal gas law. This is a law that relates amount of gas in moles, okay, to the volume it will occupy at a particular temperature and pressure. Okay, so ideal gas law is PIVNERT. PV equals NRT. If you remember, and there's my kitty cat, sorry. If you remember, um, when we did the foldable, the N stands for moles, and the R is a gas constant. And I believe I gave you all the gas constants. Um, if not, I will be providing you with the gas constants, okay? So, all right. In this one, in this video, um, I'm only going to have atmospheric pressure, but I will provide you somewhere in this video with the other two. Okay. Um, it's also on the reference materials that I put in Schoology. I hope I put them in all of them. I'll double check as soon as this video is over. All right. So P is pressure, V is volume, N is moles, R is the constant. Um, in this case, we have 0 0.0821. We also have one, if you notice, that's for atmospheres. We also have one for KPA. And we also have one for millimeters of mercury. The KPA, and I don't, uh, this, my pen's not working great, but please write down that KPA is 8.31 instead of 0 0.0821. If you see KPA is the pressure, um, then you're going to use 8.31, okay? If you see millimeters of mercury in your pressure, then you're going to use the R constant 62.4. Again, 62.4. Temperature, again, is in kelvins. Everything in gas laws in kelvins, okay? So R is called the ideal gas constant. It has multiple values, but for our purposes, we'll, well, I take that back. Ignore the, but for our purposes, because you will be using KPA and you will be using millimeters of mercury. So ignore that part. I'm using this as an old um, one. So this is also the picky law because units must be, as you see here, you must have liters, you must have moles, you must have kelvins, and you must have a pressure. It can be in KPA, and it can be in, be in millimeters of mercury. <clears throat> All right, so here is an, a way, um, an example. At what pressure would 0 0.212 moles of a gas occupy 6.84 liters at 89 degrees Celsius? Again, just like the other laws, write down all of your variables, P, V, 
N R T. Um, if you do that and then you start filling in what you have, then you can just plug it into your formula just like in math. Okay. And what you would do to find this answer is you would multiply these, okay, and you would divide by this one. Okay. Now, if you are missing a variable over here, same idea. Multiply and then divide. Okay. Again, we have, looks like we have, oh, this one is wrong. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this one? We started out, oh, no, I take that back. We did start with two significant figures. We end with two significant figures. I did not see that. Okay. All right. So at what temperature? Again, here's another problem. You must make sure that this is in liters. Here is KPA. Okay. Now on this on this video, they are not going to use the things uh, the um, R constant for KPA, but what they what we what it is going to do is they're going to convert KPA to atmospheres. That is another option you can do. Okay, you can use this conversion factor here to convert to K to um, atmospheres. It doesn't really matter if you want to just remember one constant or three. It really doesn't matter as long as you can convert. That's the key here. <laughs> Excuse me, allergies, not coronavirus. Okay. All right. So if you do convert to atmospheres and use this uh, R constant, it will work. We're but um, if you notice, here's another thing. What are we having to do with mole with the moles? Well, we're going from grams to moles. When we go from grams to moles, okay, so you just plug it in, plug your values in PV and RT. You notice that here is where my value I'm looking for. So what do you do? You multiply these, you multiply these. You take this over here and you divide, okay? And you get three significant figures and there's your answer, okay? So if you have any questions, please email me. Contact me through uh, Remind or on Schoology. I am going to do another video on Ideal and Combined where I am going to work the problems out a little bit more in front of you on paper. You'll have to bear with me because I don't have access to my board right now um, that I usually use for this. So I'll probably be holding up pieces of paper. Please just bear with me, okay? All right. See you in the next video, guys.